Welcome everyone, I'm Michelle Schumann, the Artistic Director of the Austin Chamber Music Center. Um, I'm so happy to have Saul Bitron here. He is the first violinist of Quarteto Latinoamericano. Welcome Saul, thank you for being with us. Thank you Michelle, it's a pleasure. It's been many years since we've had you come to the Austin Chamber Music Festival, so it's just thrilling to have you come back uh, this year. They will be playing the final concert of the festival on July 23rd. Um, and uh, just to let some of you know, you probably already know this, but the Quarteto Latinoamericano has been around for over 35 years. Yes. You know, you're, you're actually as old as the Austin Chamber Music Center. We were also founded in 1981. <laughs> Yes. Survivors, survivors. Yeah. Yes, survivors, absolutely. Um, and they, and it's, it seems hard to believe, but they've recorded over 70 CDs. I don't even know how that's mathematically correct or, or possible in 35 years. I stopped counting, but it's about right, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. And in addition to being just masters of, of all the standard repertoire, they've really focused on uh, Latin American music as well, done many uh, premieres and commissions and first recordings. So um, I'm very excited because you have a beautiful program lined up with the uh, Miniatures from Americas. Can you tell me a little bit about this program and how you put it together? Yes, sure. So um, the, the history of this is that the, the genre of, of string quartet has been around for uh, 250 years or so, and it's at the beginning it consisted of full length works modeled on Haydn symphonies with usually four movements, and that continued to be the case throughout the 19th century um, and the beginning of the 20th century. Composers wrote their music, even with very different styles and schools, still in the traditional three, four movement pieces. And there was a break um, in the mid 20th century until today, where composers have been using still the string quartet as a genre, but writing music that is much more, much flexible and much freer in form. Mo many of those have been just sh very short pieces with a very strong statement. Um, in the case of Latin American music and music from the Americas in general, these short pieces that we have chosen. Each one of them has a very clear uh, musical message, characteristic, or spirit. And we think that they convey sometimes as much or more than a full-length string quartet. Obviously, that's the case only for great mm -hmm. short pieces. It's like, like short stories, you know? Mm -hmm. You can read a, a novel and be very moved, very impacted, and you can write a, read a short story and be even more impacted. So I think it, it's a parallel. We have found a series of short pieces that deliver a very strong, beautiful artistic message and a very specific, also geographical location. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm very excited about this program and I, I always love putting together these these smaller uh, bite-sized uh, chunks for people too because you're right, sometimes they get and in some ways it can be overwhelming to have a four movement uh, large work. So I, I think that this is uh, I'm, I'm very excited to, uh, about this program. So let's move on to our questions uh, from our Facebook friends. Uh, yes. Judy Matula writes, uh, what's the difference in how you experience music you play during rehearsals versus live performance? I love that question because that exactly sums up the work we do. Uh, we are totally different in rehearsals and in concerts. In rehearsals, and when you practice by yourself, as you know, you're a terrific pianist, you break apart things, you take apart, you work on chunks, you try to make them better once and again and again and again, you find where are the problems, you fix them, and then you glue them together when the concert dates start approaching you in calendar, you say, oh my God, I need to start gluing the sections and playing them through, and then like a few days before the concert, you force yourself to perform from beginning to end, and, but that's where it never really happens because when you perform a piece in your, at home, you're trying to imagine you're in a concert hall, but you don't have the audience, the fantastic input and feedback you have from just from the presence of all those pe presence of all those people, and that's where it gets tricky. But it also gives the concert a special edge that you can never replicate when you practice. And to me, those two hours spent in a concert setting justify all the missed connections and all the practice that I have to do to be doing what I do. It's just a fantastic experience. I don't 
think audience members even realize how important they are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, we depend on them. I mean, I'm not talking only financially, which we do, but we depend on them to be able to carry, to convey a music message because music is not meant to be played to an empty hall. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, Karen Richmond writes, and this is this is a fun question, so we'll, yeah. I'm excited to see what you say about this. Uh, if you could play any piece for anyone, living or dead, real or mythical, <laughs> what would that piece be, and who would you play it for? Okay. And um, everyone, Saul is completely on the spot here. Yeah, he has uh, not had yeah. these questions before. <laughs> you know, I was reading today, I was playing with a violin transcription of the Schumann Cello Concerto made for violin and orchestra. Uh -huh. I've always loved that piece, and now, today I learned that it is possible to play it in the violin. So I'm going to learn it and play it, and I, need, I just need to choose. It's probably going to be for Pablo Neruda. Aha, uh -huh. nice. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that. Um, <laughs> Number three by Aurel Garza Tucker. Uh, what was the moment or piece of music that made you want to be a musician? I grew up listening to Baroque music on Saturday mornings in the radio in my house in Chile. My parents, for some reason, would always put these recordings of Bach cantatas or Vivaldi. Mm -hmm. And to me, those sunny weekend mornings with Baroque music are like a symbol of why I love to do what I do. I don't know if that's what cost me to be a musician because we were a package deal. My family just decided that I was going to play the violin. But those memories are always with me when I start to practice every morning. They're just a pleasure of listening to great music. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. And uh, Alan Anbari, he, I think, writes the most difficult question. He says, why does classical music still matter today? And what would you say to someone who thinks a classical concert would be boring? I, I think a lot about this, actually. It's a very, very relevant question, especially when I see uh, the short attention span that young people have today, and I myself included in it, because I've been shortening my attention span due to the amount of, huge amount of information and devices that we own. Mm -hmm. Classical music forces you to listen, to concentrate, to focus for a longer period of time, and to receive a very large message that is composed of different emotions. It's a, it's a, it's a long journey that you cannot, you're not supposed to interrupt to, to check your text messages. Um, when you do that, or when you read a good book, which today has become harder to do, mm -hmm. it, it lowers your heart rate, it expands your mind, it gives a boost to your brain. It makes you a better person. I think uh, listening to a classical concert is harder than ever today, but it's more important than ever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the question is, how do you get people... I think when people are there, they, they are accepting of that moment, or they can be accepting of the moment. The question is, how do you convince people you know, that it's, that it's important for them and that it, it's relative to them, or relevant to them. Yeah, you have to think about what it would be for me to go to a concert, to sit down to listen to fantastic music uh, for a couple of hours. It sounds very abstract, so it is needed to have a little preparation just by, by listening to snippets, to, yeah. by learning in advance, what, are we, what am I going to hear hey, today? What is, it, what is it about Mendelssohn symphonies that is different than Brahms symphonies? Just a little bit of preparation will get you more excited and more interested in what you're going to hear. Mm -hmm. And then just go with an open mind. Don't, don't listen to the, these preconceived ideas of which we are guilty in part, that classical music is elitist and you have to be dressed nicely and you have to be quiet and you, can't, you have to know when to clap. Oh my God, that's such a big deal. We don't care about that anyway. But uh, there are many, many prejudices that have been associated with attending a concert. Most of them are our fault, and we're trying to break those. We always talk to the audiences. We, I mean, we dress nicely, but it's not all these typical tuxedos that you see in the past. <laughs> right. It's, it's a matter of expecting to connect to the musicians that are on stage. Look at the bassoon when he has a little theme on the orchestra. Look how that how he does it. Try to listen to things that are in the middle of the texture. Don't always go for the easy to hear melody. Mm -hmm. 
challenge yourself to look for the middle voices. What are the violists doing? Why are they paying 20 violists if I can't hear them? Well, there must be a reason why the violists are there. There are lots of things that you can do, just not sit there and think, is it going to be over when? You know, there are many things. You have to challenge yourself, but it's good for you. Well, and I think that's what's so wonderful about chamber music, too, is that it's so present and people can just focus in on one person in that group and see yes. that that synergy and see how they uh, interact with one another yeah. that's very true there it's it's a much purer form of music so then there, there are no distractions you don't have a, a timpani blowing up your ears every few minutes you just you go there and listen to the voice and see how they work with each other and how these magnificent harmonies that composers thought about are being carried by just four instruments yeah so you didn't hear, I'm bringing in a timpanist for your concert. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, the concert is signed already. Oh. <laughs> no, no, nothing against it. Percussion has its place in music, but not in a string quartet. Yes, Although yeah. you will hear some effects that we do that yeah. are little things, uh, percussive things like this. Yeah. And all kind of... Well, and that, that comes from that from the Latin American style yeah. of music. Yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, perhaps rhythm is a very important element of Latin American music. Also, don't, don't want to leave it outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, this was really wonderful speaking with you, Saul. I can't wait to see you in, in a few short months. It'll be yes. now or maybe even closer than that, and it'll just be wonderful. So thank you so much for taking time to, to speak with me. I'm looking forward to our discussing the Chamber Music Center. Too. All right. Well, thank you very much. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.